corn planting day. So I decided we're going to plant the uh, Hastling, Hastings Prolific today. I keep wanting to say Hastling. I don't know why. So I, again, guys, I got this uh, from Rayleigh Farm and Field. It, I, I'm pretty sure it's that. Um, I'm going to put a link to his website. I don't think he has none right now, but he's probably hoping to get some this fall. And um, I was able to get a little bit from him before he ran out. But uh, so we're going to plant that today. They're calling for a little bit of cold weather Wednesday, but hopefully we'll be okay. And last year, I think you guys seen me use a John Deere 1010 hopper on my tractor. I'm going to put fertilize down when I plant today. I don't normally do that. I normally do it on my first pass, but I just thought I'd do it today. This video is uh, going to be more of the setup of the planter and the fertilize system. I'll post the planting of the corn in another video. And also having a few problems posting videos. My, for one thing, I have satellite internet, and, and you guys out there that have that know that that just doesn't work good. And so I may have to go to a neighbor of mine's house to post a few videos. But uh, this hopper here, it's a, I haven't used it in two or three years. It's an international base, but I adapted this coal basket or a coal hopper onto this international base because um, the international one we had got split up and stuff. And this is the old coal here. But anyway, I haven't used it in a couple years and she is about, this plate right here, it's getting pretty messed up. The wheel's okay, but I think it'll be okay for today. Um, I have been using that John Deere hopper. And like I said, I still have a reproduction hopper on the shelf, but I try not to use it because once you start using it and fertilize hits it, it, you'll never be able to stop it from rusting from then on out, unless you just seriously like sandblasted it. So we have the hopper. Come on around here, Sammy. We have the international base, and we have, uh, come on to the base right here, Sam. All right, guys, first thing we got to do is put the drive unit on, and again, I'll come in here, and I've already loosened those bolts up, and I'll sit on this arm to give myself a little stability, and you just put that thing on here, slide it in like that. It also, for the arm, and go under there and show this arm. It goes on this nut right here, Sammy, behind the tractor. Up under. This nut right here. All right, we gotta tighten these up. And sometimes I use a impact wrench to tighten these up just for speed, but uh, today I just wanted to show y'all, you know, tightening them up a, a normal way. Believe me, guys, I got sockets that I can do this with, but again, I just kind of showing it traditional. All right, so these things are tight, and the remind you of the bottom one there. Now, I'm probably breaking my own rules a little bit, guys, but I, I don't hook that bottom one up because that bolt on the bottom one, I need to take it out and probably re-thread it. So what this arm is here, this arm is what engages the fertilized drive when you let, let the arms here down. It pushes down, pushes over, engages this drive with the back wheel. I don't have the rod on here today. If you only have a straight rod, it'll have to come off if you're going to put fertilize on it. I do have a bent one that I can put on here. Now I don't run the rod with the planter because the rod 
picks the back wheel of the planter too far out of the ground and I need that back wheel on the ground so I I put my fast hitch up under the floorboard here. So the next piece is fairly simple and fairly easy. And this is the drive unit for the hopper. And it'll just go on like so. Now, a lot of you guys, and you can even you can buy parts for these things at uh, Birch Store Tractor. He, he has a lot of these parts for these hoppers. And I'm sure some of you have noticed by now, mine doesn't have the idler, the chain idler there. Um, I guess if I was doing consistently four or five acres a day, I would probably get me one. <clears throat> but I haven't noticed where it's come off at any. Excuse <coughs> me. <coughs> okay. So we have that on, and if this is the right chain, which I think it is, I have a chain for the John Deere hopper and one for the International hopper. I most time can just roll this thing right on. And there we go. So there's our chain she's on there. And she's probably on upside down. Not right. Where is it? I don't know. Maybe one of you guys know. I've never really paid attention. Open links here. Close side here. Does it ride on the closed side? Or does it ride on this side? Which it may not turn over at all anyway, but we're gonna put it right on the closed side. I expect it probably rides on the closed side. Okay, so that's on. Let's put a little grease. in here just a pump don't need to saturate it too bad there we go this drive unit probably take a couple more pumps make right outside Sam This chain here is going to run from here down to the bottom. And then it'll hook up there. Alright guys, we're going to put this hose on here. I take these out every year because there's fertilizer that gets caught behind them. This hose I use on the international one, and I have one I use for the John Deere because this hole is a little bit smaller than the John Deere. So let's put this hopper on. I'll settle it out a little bit. Always just shake it a little bit as I'm tightening it up. You know what, guys? Hold on. Now I know why I put that stainless steel 
Well, I don't know. This one right here. It was to take up some space. need to get it back in the center. Mm. Right there. There we go. See how I took up that space with it? there I guess I'm just used to the John Deere being more tight when I put the John Deere on there it's it doesn't move as much I don't remember this thing moving this much but I guess it will anyway we'll put a in there where it got there. so many gaps in this hopper I actually can shut it all the way down and it's still yeah we'll go with that right there if we had to we'll back it off a little more guys I'll pick that back up and put it in the hopper well guys I don't like the way that hopper's doing so we are going to get this one down Good way to do it. Don't hide nothing on camera. So, let's see what we got here. Nice lid. Oh man. For a lot, never been in there. A couple of stink bugs. I've never really noticed this. They didn't put a a uh, wing nut on there, so it has that. Well, let's put it on here. See what it does. tilt to it. I'm learning. 
running with you guys right now. I've never taken this thing out of the box, I don't believe. So this is the reproduction one you can buy. Just to me, just seems like it ought to be that way a little more. which I'm not too impressed with how the fit and finish is on this reproduction hopper is. I don't really see how tightening that up is going to catch this right. seems like this right here are to come over and come from the side here Sammy it just seems like this should be touching it right here coming over like the whole thing needs to go this way some and I swear I believe that thing needs to be the other way it does this bent portion right here needs to be the other way completely. Let me doctor on this thing a little bit, guys, and we'll come back to you. Okay, we're back, YouTube. All right, let me bring Sammy in and show you something. First of all, this hopper is at an angle this like this. And the downspout's here. I mean, so if you were full of fertilizer, you would come out the downspout, but it's going uphill to get to it. I don't like it. And I don't want to speak out of turn and say that this hopper is no good um, but it's not fitting right here it's hitting this right here and we're fixing to put the other hopper on to see the difference it does seem to be engaging on the gears but I don't want to take a grinder and grind that lip off of my base just to make this thing go further down there um, I guess if it got to a point where this is the only hopper I, I have left to use I might would do that but as long as I can still use an international hopper I'm not going to do any modifications to this so I don't know I'm just going to say this the this bolt was backwards, so I took the downspout off and turned it around. It was backwards straight out of the box. You guys seen it. So I turned that around. But it's, it's as far as it can go that way here. And it's just not quite enough here. So we're not going to use it today. And like I said, I'll probably only use this thing is if I can't find another international because I'm not gonna 
to make it fit, I'm not going to grind these divots off right here, in which I could. And I, I feel like it would go on down a little further. But there again, it depends on how much gear mesh I got. I mean, it may not go no further because of the mesh of the gear here. But I know it's, it's hitting here in the mesh of the gear. So let's, while we're standing here, let's put this international back on and see where it's lining up at. So the international, get in right here, Sammy. As you can see, is going over top of it. So this part right here on the international is actually going on this side of it, going right over it. So we all learned something today. And by the way, this is a reproduction U-bolt that I bought somewhere. I don't remember where I bought it, but. So now that hopper's fitting more, fitting more flush. So we're gonna try it today. It may be, there we go. It may be where I can buy me another plate if I can find another international plate and put in there and another star wheel, the rest of it would be fine. I mean, it's, it's still a good hopper. I just, if I can find me a star wheel and another international plate, I know they do have some reproduction plates, but I'm a little bit scared of them. So what did we learn? Well, if you see a reproduction hopper, you need to be careful. Um, I don't know if International made a few different variations on this piece here. Maybe some of them don't have that part that was hitting. I wouldn't think so. So I don't want to say no to this hopper yet. All I'm going to say is be careful. I could make it work, but... I'd just say be careful with it. We'll put that back up later, Sammy. Hey, so come around here for the new viewers. And if you're a new viewer, you, you may have heard me say John Deere Hopper, and this is what I'm talking about. This hop here, very good hopper, very good fertilizer control. Uh, I do put it on sometimes because I made a, a switch over device to do it. Okay guys, back where we were. So we got the hopper on. I'm going to go up to a buddy of mine's house and I can't decide if I just want to wire tie this right here and let the fertilize drop beside the plant or if I just want to inject it into the ground a little bit uh, I'm probably going to inject it in the ground I got a fertilize injector here I have one, so I can't decide if I want to maybe mount it here or mount it here. So we'll figure that out here in a few minutes and we'll, we'll get her mounted and see what we want to do there. All right, let's see if we can pick up where we left off. It's been a few minutes. I had to go up the road, come back. So we were at the fertilized hopper and I decided to go ahead and use the original style international. I put a fertilizer injector on the front. I am not running the center bar. So we're going to put fertilizer down and plant at the same time. 
I do this sometimes and sometimes I can't do it. It all depends on the soil. Um, I'm going to run the back feet as I plant. So that's going to create a, a fur for me. And here's the planter, guys. And so, you know, I, I put the thing there and we just slide it in there like so. And this is what I was talking about. If I have that center bar on here, that wheel, that wheel will be off the ground. Um, I don't have but two ways to change the speed on this plate right here. And I know I could probably count it like maybe start right here. One one full turn one full turn this one a quarter turn. And if I switch this and put the small up here and the big down here this is going to turn a little faster. So what I've been doing on corn is putting a small cog here, the big one here, and then putting a 16, 16 cell plate in it. So I need to grease this up real quick. wheels okay so I think we're all greased up there ready to go we'll check it on the uh, corn here in a second I'll show you how I check it Just about ready to go to the field. corn seeds. It goes in there pretty good. So, we don't want to waste any. That's about what I want. putting out a seed. So we're going to go with that. And I'll put the rest of I'll put the rest of the seeds in the hopper when I get to the field. So with that I'm going to close this video with uh, I know it's a little bit chopped up but we put the fertilized attachments on. Uh, we discovered there's some difference in the hoppers. And of course showed you my planter and had a guy ask me the other day did I know the speed to run the planters in and I'm, I just don't it's kind of a look thing for me and I know what it did last year I know what come up last year and I know how thick it was and I just kind of go from there uh, but other than that we'll see you on the next video planting the hasty and if I can today I'm gonna try to plant the Jimmy Red also